Hey guys, in this particular video, I'm going to be formally proving the parallaxis theorem, which states that the moment of inertia about a point O is equal to the moment of inertia around an object's center of mass plus the mass of that object, which is rotating, times by d squared, where d is the distance between these two parallel axes. Now, in order to get a better feel of what's going on, let me just draw this graphically. So let's say that we've got our object right here. In fact, let me just redraw that to make it slightly clearer. This is our object just here. And let's say that it has, it has a center of mass just here. This is its center of mass, right? And let's say that we wanted to find out what the moment of inertia around its center of mass was. Well, recall from a previous video that the moment of inertia around the center of mass is equal to the integral of r dash squared dm. Right? And in case you haven't watched the video I've done on this, spoiler alert, r dash is just going to be the distance from your center of mass towards your element of mass that makes up your object, which is, you guessed it, of mass dm. Right? So this is going to be r dash just here. Now in order to quantify this into x and y terms, let's actually, let's actually draw the axis. So this will be, this will be x dash and this will be y dash and in order to make this a little bit more generic the distance of r dash in the x coordinate system is going to have a distance x dash and this is going to be y dash okay but that's fair enough that's that's something i showed in a previous video but let's say we wanted to not calculate the moment of inertia around this axis let's say we wanted to calculate the moment of inertia around this axis right here where this right here is point O, right? First things first, we need to define what we mean by this axis. So we need to call this X and we need to call this Y, keep it as generic as possible. First things first, we know that the moment of inertia about point O, as generic as it comes, is just going to be R squared dm, where R is going to be the distance from point O towards your small element of mass dm. So this green line right here is going to have a distance r, right? And the and to quantify what that means in x and y terms, it's going to have a horizontal distance of distance x and a vertical distance of distance y, okay? Um, not only that, but we can also draw a few more things in here. We can say that the fixed distance between our two parallel axes is going to be drawn in red, and I'll call that distance d, okay? d will be a constant. It's always going to be the distance between our two fixed axes right here. Okay, so um, this looks a little bit cluttered, but in order to get a better understanding of these distances, let me actually redraw them just to the right without the picture of our objects to it. So this is our distance r in green. This is our distance r. This is our center of mass. It's located just around here, it looks like. This is our center of mass, and this right here is our distance r dash, right? And this fixed distance here is a distance d. Okay, so in order to re-describe some of these distances in terms of the other distances, we're going to have to actually distribute this into x and y components. So first of all, we know that this distance right here of, of our distance d can be split into d subscript y, that's the vertical distance of, of our distance d, and this right here can be split into our horizontal distance d subscript x. Likewise, for r dash, we can distribute it into x and y components, so the horizontal distance of r dash is just going to be um, x dash, and the vertical distance is going to be y dash. We're not done yet. We also know that this distance from here to here is going to be is going to be a distance y and we also know that this distance from here to here is going to be a distance x well we can use some year 10 geometry right here to show that our distance x is going to be equal to d subscript x plus x dash we could also say that y is going to be d subscript y plus y dash. It's really important to re-express these distances, x and y, in terms of these other distances so that we can find the distance r. So recall from Pythagoras' theorem that this is really just one big triangle, 
r is going to be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. So we could actually say that r is just going to be equal to the square root of x, sorry, well, it's x, which is d subscript x plus x dash squared plus d subscript y plus y dash squared. Okay, well, that's interesting enough, but so far it's got no practical benefit until we substitute it into here. Notice, this is our moment of inertia about point O, and that's going to be equal to the integral of r squared, right? What's r squared? Well, it's just going to be this whole thing squared. So let's do that. Let's substitute that in. In fact, let's make a little bit of space. I'm going to write this down below. So I taken around our point O is going to be equal to the integral of r squared, which is this. Notice the square root and the square cancel off to give you d subscript x plus x dash squared plus d subscript y plus y dash squared dm. I'm going to assume that our skills in algebra and integration are pretty good, so I'm going to zoom through this pretty fast, focusing on only the most important concepts. So if we were to simplify this out, we're left with d subscript x squared plus 2 d subscript x x dash plus x dash squared plus d subscript y squared plus 2 d subscript y y dash plus y dash squared all times by our small element of mass dm. Okay, well this is fair enough, but how can we simplify this giant beast of an expression? Well, we do it by grouping certain terms, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to group these terms together, and I'm going to group these terms together, right here. So, let me do that. Let me group the blue terms first. We're going to write that as the integral of d subscript x squared plus d subscript y squared dm plus the integral of x dash squared plus y dash squared dm. And then we're going to um, add what's ever left. So we're left with the integral of whatever this is. So it's 2 d subscript x x dash dm plus the integral of 2 d subscript y y dash dm. So this looks like a really messy integral right now, but it really simplifies out quite a lot as you're about to see. Okay, first things first. We know that d subscript x squared and d subscript y squared are both constants, right? Recall, let me zoom up so you can see. This distance d is a constant. It's the distance between our two parallel axes, which we've chosen to be fixed. So they're going to be, the distance d is constant, and consequently, its horizontal and vertical components will also be constant. So we can factorize that out of the integral sign, and we can leave that as d subscript x squared plus d subscript y squared times the integral of your mass dm. Okay, so and you might be getting a little bit of a hint as to, as to what this will evaluate out to, but I'll, I'll share that till the next round and, and uh, evaluate what this is. This is going to be the integral of x dash squared plus y dash squared. Now, um, I've already done Pythagoras' theorem once, so you might be getting a good feeling of what that, of what that is. Notice if we wanted to calculate the distance of this blue line right here, r dash, what is that equal to? Well, we know that r dash is just going to be using Pythagoras' theorem. Again, it's going to be x dash squared plus y dash squared. That's using Pythagoras' theorem again. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to replace this with, the, with r dash squared, r dash squared times by dm. Right? Notice that the square root sign cancels out. Um, and uh, now we're left with evaluating the rest of these two terms, and that's going to be, in fact, let me, in case you're losing track, let me just draw arrows to show what's evaluating to what. So this evaluates into this, and this evaluates into this, and this will be soon to evaluate into, um, well, 2dx are both constants, so that's going to be 2d subscript x times the integral of x dash dm, plus... 2 d subscript y times the integral of y dash dm. So this evaluated into that, and this evaluated into that. I hope you're not losing me here. Okay, well, 
we've used Pythagoras twice, why not use it a third time? What is d subscript x squared plus d subscript y squared? Well, if we zoom up again, d subscript x squared plus d subscript y squared is just going to be equal to your distance d squared. So I'll write that as d is equal to the square root of d subscript x squared plus d subscript y squared. Right, so without the square root sign, that means you've squared both sides, and I'll write this now as d squared times by the your integral of your mass, and when you're integrating dm over your mass of your object, you're going to be left with your total mass of your object, plus, now, so let me reemphasize that this evaluated into this, and now let's evaluate this. What is our dash squared dm. What's the integral of that? Well, I've discussed previously, and let me zoom out, I feel like this is becoming a little bit cluttered, r dash squared dm, if we zoom up, that's, that's your moment of inertia of your center of mass. So what we can do is we can literally just substitute that below, so let's write that down. We can write this as adding to our moment of inertia taken around our center of mass. Now this is where the tricky part comes. This is the hardest part of the problem. How do we evaluate the rest of these terms? You might have gotten a sneaking suspicion that these terms probably cancel out to zero, but that's only because I've given you the answer beforehand. We need to prove that both of these terms cancel out to zero, and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, in order to actually get a really good understanding for this, we really need to understand the concept of the center of mass inside and out. So let's do a brief reminder on the center of mass. Let's say we were to have a bar just here of length L right here. And let's say we choose to place an axis just here. Let's call this X dash and let's call this Y dash, right? We would find that the center of mass of this homogeneous bar would be right here, right? And we could prove that using the center of mass formula. Recall, x bar is equal to the integral of x dash dm all over your total mass, and y bar is equal to the integral of y dash dm all over your total mass, right? Well, in this particular case, for this particular bar, and I know I'm um, kind of diverging from um, this proof a little bit, but it's really crucial you get this, but for this particular bar, x, x bar x bar will actually be equal to L on 2. That's this distance just here. x bar is this distance just here. L on 2. L on 2. And, and consequently y bar would also just be equal to 0 because the distance you need to travel from your origin, which we've placed just here, towards your center of mass is 0. So I, I'll put a video in to calculate how to, to find out how to calculate the center of mass. But really, it's, it's nothing too tricky. All it's doing is x bar is the horizontal distance from your axis towards your center of mass. And y bar is your vertical distance from your chosen axis towards your center of mass. So in this particular case, when we're dealing with an object like this, when we're dealing with an object like this, where we've placed x bar and y bar, x bar, sorry, x dash and y dash at the center of mass, then the distance they need to travel toward to get to the center of mass is zero. So let's let's cover the maths behind this. So in our particular case, when we're dealing with the integral of x dash dm, what we could do is just focus on the integral of x dash dm is equal to x dash x bar, which we know is going to be equal to zero, right? We know it's going to be equal to zero because the distance you need to travel from your center of mass to get to your center of mass is zero. Consequently, we can times mass by both sides now and realize that the integral of x dash dm must be equal to zero. You can do the exact same for y bar. So we can say that the integral of y dash dm divided by your total mass is going to be equal to y bar, but for the same exact reasons, the distance you need to travel from your origin to get to your center of mass in this particular case is zero, because our axis is the center of mass. So we can say this is equal to zero, multiply mass by both sides, mass gets cancelled out, leaving us with a phenomenon y dash dm is equal to zero. Right? So all we need to do is plug both of these phenomenons back into our equation. We notice, bam, this gets eliminated to zero. We notice this gets eliminated to zero, which leaves us with our final amazing result that, this, that the moment of inertia taken around point O is going to be equal to the moment of inertia around our center of mass plus the mass 
of our object times by the direct distance between our two parallel axes. This is the parallel axis theorem. All right, guys, I hope you understand that in the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to actually ca um, calculate um, the moment of inertia around different parts of objects which aren't the center of mass.